Hi, my name is Vinay and uh, in this video I would be presenting a software named as Twentisim uh, and uh, I would be uh, focusing more of application of Twentisim in Mechatronics domain and uh, its purpose to solve various problems in uh, the real world and uh, how you can make use of Twentisim software in your uh, product design. <coughs> okay, so. Uh, so as we are familiar with uh, lots of uh, examples of dynamic systems, uh, for example, a crane which is an electromechanical giant uh, product, so and or a robotic dog. So these are mostly highly uh, worked areas in the mechatronics domain. So here we have a mechanical setup along with a smart or you can say intelligent control system. So these are a very good example of mechatronics domain combining the. Uh, uh, physics of physical system or a mechanical system along with and controller so they help you to uh, Design a system based on both of these concepts. So if you look at the system block diagram So these are the basic four components of a mechatronic system that in the end side you have the system element which is a mechanical system consisting of cams pulleys gears or any lifting system or moving system Okay the feedback of this mechanical elements are being read by the sensors, uh, the feedback for like example speed, acceleration or velocity or even uh, the position or the angle, all these uh, inputs can be read by the sensors and given to a controller who decides that how the mechanical systems should perform according to the given signal input or the set point. So the controller decide how much the mechanical system is deviating from the set point and he gives an error signal which in turns are actuating the actuators or I mean like not actuating I would say that they make the actuators respond according to it. Now these actuators may be a DC motor, solenoid or anything which converts an electrical signal into a physical quantity like movement, position or anything like that. So these days the systems are designing using a modeling approach that means you make use of softwares to design your product before coming in the real world. So modeling helps you to reduce development time, they allow you to fine tune the components. Obviously it's cost effective because it saves a lot of amount of time and labor efforts. And it allows you to select the, the precise component which should be uh, applied or connected to your system. So def um, by definition, modeling is uh, described as like connection of elements in the software program for analysis and the implementation that you describe how exactly your system looks like in the real world and you describe in the same way in the software. Okay. So modeling is not a new term with the advent of softwares. This has been used from a long time in the computers. But the basic bottleneck comes up uh, with such kind of mechatronics domain is that you have to combine the principles of both electronics and mechanical into one domain or on one page of the software. So that means the software should support the analysis method for both because you need to analyze that how much amount of uh, accuracy your controller is giving and how much your mechanical system is responding. So it should support both of them. Because if you find any problems in the later world of the design, uh, so the cost of errors is significantly very high when you go at the production level. So if you find the errors in your system at the design level, the cost is very low. And as you go uh, ahead in the stages of the development or the production, the, if you find any errors in your system, for example, you selected a wrong motor, uh, the motion was wrong and probably mechanical arrangement has to be changed, then obviously the cost is quite huge when you come to the later part of the development. So to solve these problems, uh, I propose this software to be used, uh, which is named as Twentisim, uh, which has been developed by Control Lab Products BV in Netherlands. So it's a Dutch based product. So with Twentisim, you can simulate the behavior of dynamic systems uh, based on the principles of electrical, mechanical, thermal, hydraulic, or any possible combination of these systems. Okay. So these are the basic four domains supported by uh, Twentisim, electrical, hydraulic, thermal, and mechanical. And it's a quite uh, aged and mature product. It has been it, uh, developed in the 70s and early uh, 80s. Uh, it was renamed to 20 sim in the mid 90s. 
and uh, there has been lots of versions uh, since then right now it is in the 4.8 version of release <coughs> Uh, it's been released, um, uh, made by uh, in, uh, joint efforts of uh, University of Twente in Netherlands. Uh, hence, the name uh, is been derived from that uh, Twente SIM. Okay, many people ask that question. Okay, uh, Twente SIM can be used in various domains of uh, mechatronics, uh, like robotics, automotive, aviation, or industrial purpose. So, all there are various applications which Twente SIM support. For example, engine control, hill control, or dynamic control of uh, your automotive body, or even the wings control, or fuel management in the aviation industry, or pick and place, or simple, you can even use for the defense and artillery purpose also. Many of our customers have used for artillery purpose. <coughs> Twente SIM is being used by various R&D centers in India. Uh, these are only the major customers in the Indian uh, Shores, so I'm just displaying the name of the customers over here like uh, Atomic Research Centers, Baba Atomic Research Centers, and even some DROs. And there are a couple of names missing, but still, uh, there are lots of uh, research institutes using the 20 sim software. Apart from that, all the leading uh, education institutes are making use of 20 sim for teaching their uh, mechatronic subject or any mechanical related subjects or electrical related uh, concepts to the engineering students. Uh, if we talk about there are major customers from IITs, NITs, uh, government college of engineering and uh, major names in the universities, they are making use of it. I just displayed uh, only the major customers. There are many other uh, industrial customers who are making use of software for development of their product like Bosch, Rolls-Royce, Philips, European space agencies are making use for making a Mars rovers. Okay. A few of them are from the Indian side, the rest are from the international side. <clears throat> so, 20 sim works on lump parameter modeling. Uh, this is just to describe that, okay, on what principles of uh, modeling method 20 sim use. So, there are major two uh, modeling methods like FEM and LPM. So, finite element method is based on like large description of the system uh, where you can even identify that how much amount of uh, stress would be applied on the joints etc but lamp parameter modeling is at the only boundary conditions so but this allows this is very fairly accurate and it's much more faster it allows you to quickly uh, find the solution and you don't require a complex or high-end computing platform to run the software so okay this is on the boundary conditions same extended one so this is an example of active suspension control. I think I have a video. Okay. <clears throat> so where you have a vehicle and spring, uh, uh, this is the, 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 the spring of the tire uh, with the mass of a chassis. And this is suspension. On top of it, there is a red uh, color body, which is your mass of the body, which is resting on the suspension. And you can control the amount of dampness of this across the spring suspension by taking a velocity feedback and controlling the force applied across this uh, damper so okay maybe i just open the software and uh, show the live demo of it so just i open the software this is i'm working on 4.7 version of tourism okay so this is how the software looks like and uh, on the left hand side you have a library from where you can access various components uh, or even open the examples. So I just go to examples, control, okay. here we are. So here is an example of a suspension system which is actively controlled and uh, okay maybe at this point of time I just take it relax and before starting this example I just open or maybe make another example of spring mass damper which is a very basic one to understand it will allow you to even see and visualize how the software works and uh, maybe then I can come back to this active suspension okay so let's say uh, we want to make a simple uh, system of uh, spring mass damper 
which is uh, something like this that uh, you have a fixed world something like where you have a spring hints to the fixed world and below it you just suspend a mass okay that's it and i just want to see that how much this mass is getting displayed uh, dis displaced so how it goes up and down the side rise uh, but then i have to apply a force to it a pulse force so that it just turns on the displacement of the mass and i would like to see that how it uh, moves and how far it goes before damping it completely to zero okay so as is a mechanical product i just go to acne diagram mechanical components and the translation movement because this is divided in two parts rotation and translation i just go to components drag drop a mass so i have the mass just go for the default values and uh, i just take uh, maybe a spring damper that would be good so again i just select the default value and uh, a fixed world okay here we are yeah so i if you want to just connect it so just click on this button so it will start connection mode so you just click on one component left click on other one so it will make connections yeah that's it if you want to just align it and so you can just make it arrange better so here we are so it's the same component so i have a spring along with the damper is also installed in this component you if you want you can just have a simple spring but then it won't damp out now let's say i want to start simulation so you just click this button and it will start the simulator and uh, if I just click on run simulation, I won't see anything because I have not told the software okay, what do I want to see or observe. So I just double click over here and I ask him that okay, add a curve and I want to see the mass x, this is the length or the displacement of it. So I just say this is the uh, displacement. Yeah. Now I run the simulation, I see that it's completely zero, but that's true because it has started from a steady state and we need to push the bell so that it can start ringing, okay. So what I do is I just apply a force to it. So I just go to translation and actuators and I select a force actuator. So it will apply a force on this mass, okay. But this is a, not a constant force actuator. You can see that there is an input to it. So he will apply the force in the same manner as the input is being provided. So for giving the input, I just go to signal library, sources, and I just look for the pulse signal. Uh, due to recording it's uh, just crawling a lot okay so here I have a pulse so I just connect these two so now it will apply a pulse force on the mass so I just start simulation and there we go so here you see that as the force was applied the mass displaced by around 0.16 uh, I find the maximum yeah 0.16 uh, meter on the top side and on the bottom side and this oscillates for a while and damps out and comes back to rest of around 12 to 13 to 14 uh, seconds uh, you can even double click over here the model and say add curve and the force actuator output you can see so you can see the force actuator this is the F so this is the force applied of one newton meter so you can distribute the curve you can see across that after applying the force the mass gets displayed and set it on to zero so this is how the transition works now let's say you want to add a controller to it maybe i just add a simple objective to my design that as you can see that it goes around 0.16 uh, meter of displacement at least it crosses definitely to 0.1 meter so I just may take an objective that this mass should be displaced to 0.1 meter and it should hold it over there, it should stay over there. Maybe it's just simple a latch design or some mechanical design where I just push the mass and hold it 
2.1 meter over there and it will stay there so for this I need to take the feedback of the position and I need to add a controller both I have to do it so to do this I just go to sensor and take a position sensor which is absolute value okay and just press the space bar to start the connection so this is what the feedback I'm taking okay then I need a controller so I go to signal uh, control block PID control continuous so you have a lots of range of controllers available so you can have P, PD, PI or PID controller anything of that kind so I just select a PID P controller which is a very basic one okay so I just remove this pulse input because the output of the controller will be given to the force actuator so the controller will decide that how much amount of force should be applied so that the mass can be displayed a uh, displaced to 0.1 meter so the position sensor output will go to the measured value input so i just click over here now, as there are two inputs the software will ask you that okay where you want to connect the input to the set point or the measure value so i select the measure value okay and uh, i need to give a set point the set point would be my 0.1 uh, value because that's what the position i want to hold it so i take a constant i connect to the set point Okay, here we are. So this is this constant. I will just double click, go inside, and I set the value as 0.1. Okay. So here we have a spring mass damper where the mass would be display uh, displaced till a uh, distance of 0.1 meter and will be asked to hold it over there. So let's simulate and see how difference it will make. So this is our previous simulation run. So here you see that it starts over there, but then it tries to catch up, catch up, catch up, catch up, and it takes a lot of time to reach to 0.1 meter of distance. And that's okay because we have not tuned our PID controller. We have not told the software that for what value of PID uh, it will work the best. So you, need, you can do that over from here. You can click on parameters. You can go to controllers and you can give the value of PID and the proportion controller which is K maybe I just set it to 5 and TD maybe as 0.5 and the I is 0.8 seconds or 800 milliseconds so I just say OK. Now when I run simulation you can see a lot of difference now it's very quick okay so maybe again I increase the K to 10. So there you can see that significant improvement is there. Okay. You can go back to controller and maybe give it a value of 50. Yeah. So now you can see that this is, I just zoom this area. Yeah. So this is the latest run of simulation and uh, maybe I just reset it. And it's well. So now you can see that now at less than two seconds it, it is able to reach to steady state value which is a 0.1 there is only one overshoot undershoot and the rise time is pretty recent one so you can even fine tune the PID controller to set it so they are methods the software can help you to tune the PID controller so I just put it back to one and let's see the effect of it yeah so there will be slightly more oscillations but the rise time decreases so maybe I just reduce it to 0.4 and make it 0.1 yeah so this is even better so oscillations are less so there are methods to tune it so I will let you know like uh, in the toolbox you can I mean, multiple run simulation you can set up to optimization of the parameter values so that will help you to find the PID values quicker so as you can see that I just quickly made a control system and control the position of the uh, spring mass damper so that's uh, how Tunisian works it's very quick swift and help you to design the stuff in a very quick manner I just save this file for our later uh, later references uh, spring mass damper so in a similar manner we can come back and see the example of uh, spring mass uh, damper expanded one but applied to a um, practical use which is active suspension which is being installed for uh, high-end uh, vehicles
So this is active suspension. So again, you have a spring and a mass on it. So this is again a spring mass damper system. And this is a, the vehicle suspension. Okay, across this there is a damper. But there is a force actuator across it, which decides that how much amount of force should be applied across it, so that you can change the damping coefficient. And on top of it, there is a mass, which is the mass of the body, car body, resting on it. And instead of position this time, you are taking a feedback of velocity. And you just subtract to the set point, and as an error input, you give it to a PID controller. So the same PID controller, kind of, and uh, which the output is controlling the force actuator. So let's see the simulation of this. Uh, there is a switch in between so that you can turn on and off the PID controller. So you can see the effect and difference of it. So when you simulate, you have a graphical result. So this is the same thing what we did just now with the spring mass damper. We saw the graphical results. So yes, you can understand quite well that how much amount of your red body is oscillating and how much displacement it is being giving. And uh, But at the same time, Microsoft uh, 20 sim also has an animation toolbox with the help of which you can animate the behavior of your mechanical system. So this will allow you to understand the results in much quicker manner. Your presentations will go much better and easier to explain about the design. So here you can see that as the road disturbances increases, the red body is displacing a lot. So you can imagine the discomfort the passengers may feel when they are sitting inside this car body. So as of now, the active suspension is turned off. So let me turn it on by going the parameters and on-off switch and I just make it one. And when you simulate back again, so you can see the red body is quite straight line. It may be displacing a little bit, but it is not oscillating. So as you can see that even the road is disturbing and it is providing a lot of noises and the, uh, you know, it is uh, traveling through patchy roads. The red body stays firm over there. So the passengers will not feel any discomfort and they would be traveling with much more luxury. So you can change parameters and play around the how the system will work. For example, you go to mass and this is 250 kg, maybe you just put it 400 kg. So you just want to see that, okay, if some passenger gain weight, what will happen? So it will not oscillate, but then definitely it will come down because the suspensions would be uh, press down a lot because of the weight. So if you want to rectify this solution, uh, this problem, what can be done? So this kind of questions can be popped up to the students and uh, the right answer should be that you have to change the stiffness of the spring because that is the amount of kind of weight they should be able to handle. So here you can see that it is not oscillating. It may come down and displace a little bit towards the downside, but it is not oscillating and giving a comfortable ride to the passengers. So this is what Twinism can do for you. This is quite easy and quick. So where you have a mechanical set of mechanical component on the left hand side, what you saw, and on the right hand side is your control system. So jointly you can simulate, analyze the behavior, steady around it. So you can select your PID controller and play around with it. Okay. So let me come back to the presentation. So this is the example I just covered. So as you can see that modeling style, uh, uh, there are a lot of modeling styles available in Twinism. You can write equations, you can use graphical methods or uh, linear system editors or even the graphical methods like Akinic Diagram that what we just used it. Uh, there's also bond graph design entries available and the block diagram method is also available in Twinism. So there are various methods with the help of which you can describe your model and quickly uh, make it to working. And uh, we have this editor, what we used just now. And on the left hand side, what do you see the picture of the library? So you can drag, drag lots of components and start connecting them and make system quickly. So this is what an example shows that, okay, this is what uh, the system may look like. So you can drag drop the components from the library, make connections to it <coughs> and uh, start simulating. So we have already done this. Apart from this, there are modeling tools which will assist the developer to design uh, the mechanical system arrangement like a 3D mechanics editor. So with the help of this, you can exactly specify that how your mechanical arrangement has been made. You can specify the connection of the component, joints, their rotation, their inertia property, mass properties. 
so based on that he will convert that mechanical uh, 3d mechanics uh, model into a mathematical model which can be simulated in 20th century apart from this this is a motion profile wizard with the help of which you can generate output signals like position velocity and acceleration on various profiles uh, it has inbuilt simulator uh, that what we have seen and also a 3d animation simulator so with the help of which you can make your simulations much more interactive and beautiful maybe i'll just take an example i just go to library i just open examples which are readily available from various domains for example okay a complex robot so you can see that this is uh, the model of the complex robot which is a pick and place robot So I just simulate this. So here you can see that it, 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 it works in real time, but then now I just, uh, sorry, I just run it in the real time world, okay. So this is an animation uh, representation of the system where the robot comes down, picks up an object, goes to the uh, destined hole, but it misses it, comes back, aligns it, and then it will drop the object over there. So this kind of animation behavior you can do with the model so that your explanation of the, uh, the system working is much more easier than explaining the graphical results. We also have a frequency domain toolbox with the help of which you can frequency analyze, uh, frequency domain analysis of the outputs can be done. For example, uh, linear system editor is there where you can plot body plot, uh, Nyquist charts, all that Nicole charts, they all can be plot. You can even do, do FFT analysis of any of the output. Uh, so the plots which are available body, Nyquist, Nicole's and full zero chart using a linear system editor. So that helps to understand the how the system is working and what is the stability of the system. We also have a time domain toolbox with the help of which you can do a lot of analysis related to your uh, design like parameter sweeping, optimization, curve fitting and, uh, and analysis like sensitivity and Monte Carlo and various analysis can be done. There is also a curve fitting toolbar example. Okay, this is just to, uh, maybe I just open this example and let me find it. So this is an example of curve fitting uh, model. So in this, for example, you have a plant model, you have the equation. So you, you can just go inside and see that, okay, this is the equation which has been written on the plant. Okay. Now it has one uh, input. So the point is that you have an input. Based on this input, the plant has to produce a response. But uh, you are not familiar that, okay, what for what parameter of this, uh, equation uh, you will get the exact and correct response but fortunately you have a recorded file data which is a previously recorded real plant file data is available so you need to match up your simulation response with the actual response and when you first run the simulation you can see that the blue one is the real plant response and the green one is the model response so you can see that they are not matching enough so you can just go to multiple runs of simulation, curve fitting, and you can select the various curve fitting algorithm. Right now it's a um, Brodden, Fletcher, Gold, Fab, Shannon. Okay. And you just load up the parameters which you need to modify to fit up the response like omega and zeta. You can specify the minimum and maximum range of values. And then you will subtract these two variables like model response and the plan response. And you try to get the integral absolute value of the result. And when it is minimum, obviously the software will let you know the values. So you just run this button instead of run simulation. You just go for multiple run simulation. So you can see that it runs the simulation for a while. Actually, let me show you again. So it runs. So you can see that he runs multiple simulations and you click on values and he, he says that okay i run lot of simulation runs for example around 40 plus but the 32nd simulation was the closest you can see that the result was the lowest and the subtraction of these two values was the lowest so i just tell him that okay they set these value so he will set the value of omega and zeta in the parameter block and now when we run simulation so you can see the green line exactly overlaps the blue one. So maybe 
uh, I just go the green one and increase the thickness just to show it nicely. Yeah. So now you can see the green one is exactly following the blue one line. So this is a curve fitting where this kind of analysis can be done quickly. Uh, so this is a 3D uh, mechanics from toolbox. I already uh, explained this. Apart from this, there is a very uh, useful and utility toolbox uh, which we call as real-time toolbox. So this comes next with 20 sim, uh, which can convert any control system in a set of C code. So that is a very good feature in the 20SIM software where you want to convert any given control system model in a C code, okay. So for example, like uh, you just, I, I just open my spring mass damper, I don't want to save it, okay. So we come back to my spring mass damper and let's say I just want to have a C code of this PID controller. Okay, so when you run the simulation, okay, and you can go to tool, real-time toolbox, C code generation, and you can ask him that, okay, I want the C code for and PID model, which is the controller model. I just say, okay, so he will do it at the temp folder. He just creates a folder where he will store over there. So here you can see that he has converted the entire model, the PIE model, into a set of C code along with a lot of functions and IOs. So you can make use of this uh, C code for any of your uh, implementation in the microcontrollers and you can download into the microcontrollers and connect with the real world and start executing. Apart from this, it also can convert this C code into another format. For example, I just go to tool, real time toolbox C code. And you can even select the commonly available boards like uh, Arduino. So you just select uh, the same controller sub model and select that I want a model for the Arduino board. And uh, we'll do this for you. So I can go to that temp folder, C drive temp. And uh, so that is a sketch of the controller. Okay. I don't have this installed, so yeah, this is the INO file. Yeah, so here you can see that this is the Arduino controller uh, main file, and this you can just simply download, compile in the Arduino ID, and download to your Uno or any basic boards and start executing. But remember that obviously the uh, the performance of the controller will depend on the Mac controller architecture and the features provided by the Mac controller. Okay. Apart from this, we also have 4C toolchain, uh, which will help you to compile and download and connect with your microcontroller board uh, in a very easy to go manner and uh, will allow you to execute your C code in the real world. Uh, this is a kind of next step with the C code generation toolbox, that is real time toolbox, because once you have a C code, uh, for many of the engineers who are from mechanical domain or who are not familiar with the C code compiling and playing with the microcontroller architectures, for them it's in the blessing because now you have a 4C tool chain. Uh, the C stands for configure, connect, compile, and command. So, what it does, it just takes a C code generated by the 20 sim and you have to just tell him that, okay, this is the microcontroller board I'm using and uh, these are the IOs I want to interface with and that's it and he will just compile the code for you and he will download the code in the microcontroller architecture and uh, he will even run the code for you. You can collect the response from the uh, hardware and it will even log and plot uh, all that stuff it can do. Uh, I will just present the 4T, 4C tool chain in another video and explain in detail how it works. So you can, you can even perform hardware loop simulation with 4C tool chain. Uh, I will cover all this in another video. So these are examples like a dribble, which is a, uh, a 2D walker, which is designed for with a low power energy consumption. 
you can request uh, me a video of this because it's a quite long video uh, it will be difficult for me to cover in this maybe I can just open the model and uh, try to show it down I just open this video of the triple uh, sorry not model not the video so this was a 2D walker which was designed with uh, a human walking biped behavior uh, with a minimum amount of power consumption. So here you can see this is uh, the 3D model or the mechanical mathematical model of the mechanical system. This is the model of the motor which was used in the, this and that is the control algorithm. So you can just simulate this. So here on the right hand side you can see the walking behavior. So you can animately uh, show that how does your robot is behaving and how it's working. Okay, uh, behavior should not be the right word, uh, and that is not just uh, used for the humans. <laughs> yeah. So it shows the power consumption. The average power consumption is uh, below 15 watts. In this simulation run. With that you can adjust and fine tune it according to the motor use and here you, you can run in real time that how the robot is going to walk around because the earlier it was the simulation run now this is in the actual run now for example if if i play with any other parameter of the model so this is my 2d walker so these are the mass of the the tubes used like 3 kg 3 kg so leg etc etc so let's say instead of 3 kg I set it to 4 kg and let me see that how much uh, effect it will bring around. So you can notice the, the walking style has been changed of the robot. So it's no longer walking in the same manner. <clears throat> the speeds are different, the power consumption has changed from the previous plot. So let me uh, <clears throat> do something uh, blundering and uh, instead of 4, I'll just make it 6 of the one side of the leg. Okay, so I made him fall. So here you can see that after few walks, uh, he's not able to maintain its center of gravity and the control is not able to match up the weight balance and uh, he falls down on its back. So this kind of simulation behaviors you can uh, perform using 20 cent and the control system can be downloaded, converted into a C code and downloaded in the real world and very quickly. So 20 sim is also being used in various uh, space projects also. Like the European Space Agency has been using Tunisian for development of their Mars rover. So, <clears throat> the, so it's a multi axial uh, ter um, robot which can walk over through various terrains and uh, go over through lots of object, uh, obstacles in between. So, there are a lot of case studies and examples. I just, just skip it out. So, uh, I just show one more uh, demo of it. So as you can see that from the left hand side is a library of components from where you can drag drop lots of components and examples uh, right from uh, electrical side to uh, mechanical side. So mechanical examples we already seen it. So we just open something from uh, electrical side. So components like and, and filters like and high pass filter. So I just simulate this. So here you can see that and a frequency varying signal has been applied to the system and when the frequency crosses the set point or the marker uh, it starts passing the frequency and he's accumulating the lower frequency. Okay. And apart from this uh, rectifier circuit. So very basic rectifier circuits for the student purpose they want to study that okay how the rectifiers work. 
a uh, busy rectifier or half wave or full wave, all that can be studied. So here you can see that with the AC input and after a few milliseconds the output rises, the cathode rises, you can calculate the ripples and see that how much it is being uh, giving the RMS value of it. You can even change the capacitor value to see the difference of it. For example, this is a 1 millifarad, maybe I make it to 2 millifarad. Just run the simulation again. So here you can see that it takes a little more time to charge the new simulation run. It takes more time to charge. That's quite obvious because the cathode value has increased. Okay, and the ripples have a little bit came down as compared to the previous run. Let's take uh, something from hydraulic side. So you have designed something like a lifting system. So there's a pivoted joint. This is a the hydraulic uh, system, so which is lifting a load of maybe specified weight like 140 kg. So here you have a wall, okay, and uh, you have a cylinder over here, okay. So you have a pump uh, somewhere over here, okay, and these are the tanks, okay. This is the velocity actuator which is being uh, controlling the pump. And this is a proportional controller who is design who is taking feedback from the mass, okay, which has been getting uh, lifted. He is taking a position feedback from the mass and giving to the proportional controller, who based on the motion profile set point, he decide that okay, which wall has to be open so that the cylinder is uh, pushing the joint so that the mass can be lifted. Okay, so let's simulate this. So. So here you can see this is a set point, the green one, that this is how I want to lift my mask with a slow oscillation and displace it to this distance and put it back again to the original position. So here you can see the red one, the following, the mask is following exactly the same profile with a delayed response, but that's okay because this is how the hydraulic system works and it goes back to the original position. And this is the displacement of the cylinder. Okay. And these are the pressure charts created in the cylinder. So there are a lot of examples which are readily available in the uh, 20 sim folder. So uh, anyone can uh, take the design from the reference and start developing it. And the best part of 20 sim is that most of the models, more than 90, 95% of the models are openly available. So that means anyone can open these models, understand how they work and uh, if required make modifications and use it for their purpose. For example, I just go to proportional controller inside. So I can easily come to know that how the proportional controller works and what are the mathematical equations used to represent this proportional controller. So you can see that output is nothing but multiplication of two factors, one in the error input and the proportional gain. And I want to see that, okay, how does and uh, uh, this uh, pressure relief ball works. So I just double plug go inside and there is another model. So I can see this mathematics inside. If I want to make any changes, uh, uh, you're most welcome. You can just copy this model to your folder and make modification, play around, learn how they work. For example, I just open this wall. So there were multiple wall, four, three way proportional wall. So, and you can just see inside that how the mathematics, mathematics makes this system work. So this allows students to understand the system much more uh, in a much more better format and they can make relation with the theory and the practical purpose utility of it so let's go inside the cylinder so this is how the cylinder equations have been written so i'm allowed to study them understand them and uh, modify them as per my requirements so this all is possible okay. apart from this it has many toolboxes like control toolbox and uh, like filter you can design your own filter you can design your controller B spline network editor, MLP network editor. It has a um, mechatronics toolbox for generating various cams, motion profiles, etc. And a frequency domain toolbox where you can generate uh, various systems or linearize the model. For example, you just go to linear system, you can specify this is my transfer function. For example, uh, on the top side, I'll just say one, and that's it. So I have two upon s squared plus 0.5 s plus one 
I can just see the body plot of it or the step plot of it. So this is how it will respond. Or the pole zero, Nyquist or clinical chart, all that can be made. So I just place it over here. And uh, maybe I just go to signal sources and apply a step input to it. And I have to get signal monitor. I just click on connect, connect the system, connect the system. And I should see the same step response what I saw in the linear system editor. Yeah. So if you keep on clicking uh, run simulation, it will go for one more step of the simulation. So you can see the same response I'm getting. Okay. So this is what uh, 27 is all about. So you can design various kind of systems to it based on these uh, principles. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. You can write to me. I can make a quick video for you for any particular examples you wish to see on 27. Uh, thank you very much for watching this video. This was Vinay here. Thank you.